Hello and welcome to our online service for Trinity Sunday. It's wonderful to be back with you. I just want to say a personal thanks to everybody who has wished me well and sent cards and gifts. They've certainly helped me to keep going over the last few weeks. But we're just going to take a moment in the silence before we begin our service for today. And so let us pray. Be with us, Spirit of God. Nothing can separate us from your love. Breathe on us, breath of God. Fill us with your saving power. Speak in us, wisdom of God. Bring strength, healing and peace. The Lord is here. His Spirit is with us. And so we're now going to have our first hymn, Let All the World in Every Corner Sing. come now to our time of confession. Christ, the light of the world, has come to dispel the darkness of our hearts. In his light, let us examine ourselves and confess our sins. God of mercy, we acknowledge that we are all sinners. We turn from the wrong that we have thought and said and done, and are mindful of all that we have failed to do. For the sake of Jesus, who died for us, forgive us for all that is past and help us to live each day in the light of Christ our Lord. Amen. May Almighty God, who sent his Son into the world to save sinners, bring you his pardon and peace, now and forever. Amen. God, make peace within us and between us and grant us healing and strength to do God's will. Amen. And so as God's forgiven people, we say the words of the Gloria together. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. And we just take a moment in the silence to gather our thoughts before God, before we pray the collect prayer. Let us pray. Faithful creator, 
whose mercy never fails, deepen our faithfulness to you and to your living word, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. I hand over now to Simon for our first reading, which will be followed by our hymn, God is Working His Purpose Out. Today's reading is from Romans chapter 5, verses 1 to 8. Therefore, since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus, through whom we have obtained access to this grace in which we stand and we boast in our hope of sharing the glory of God. And not only that, but we also boast our sufferings, knowing that the suffering produces endurance, and endurance produces character, and character produces hope. And hope does not disappoint us, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit that has been given to us. For a while we were still weak, and at, at the right time Christ died for the ungodly. Indeed, Rarely will anyone die for a righteous person, though perhaps for a good person someone might actually dare to die. But God proves his love. God proves his love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. hand over to Mike for our gospel reading and to Reverend Debbie for our talk today. The gospel is taken from the gospel of Matthew beginning at verse, chapter 9 verse 35 until chapter 10 verse 8. Then Jesus went about all the cities and villages teaching in their synagogues and proclaiming the good news of the kingdom and curing every disease and every sickness. When he saw the crowds, he had compassion for them, because they were harassed and helpless, like sheep without a shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, The harvest is plentiful, but the labourers are few. 
Therefore ask the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. Then Jesus summoned his twelve disciples and gave them authority over unclean spirits to cast them out and to cure every disease and every sickness. These are the names of the twelve apostles. First Simon, also known as Peter, and his brother Andrew. James, the son of Zebedee, and his brother John. Philip and Bartholomew, Thomas and Matthew the tax collector. James, the son of Alphaeus and Thaddeus. Simon the Canaanite, and Judas Iscariot, who betrayed him. The twelve Jesus sent out with the following instructions. Do not take a road leading to Gentiles, and do not enter a Samaritan town, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. As you go, proclaim the good news. The kingdom of heaven has come near. Cure the sick and raise the dead, cleanse those with skin disease, and cast out demons. You received without payment, give without payment. This is the Gospel of the Lord. So let us pray. Loving God, take my words and speak through them. Take our ears and allow them to hear your word to us. And take our hearts and set them on fire with love for you. Amen. So I wonder, where do you see yourself in today's Gospel reading? It happens close to the beginning of Jesus' ministry. He's healed some people, proclaimed the kingdom of God, gathered some followers. And today he stands looking out at a crowd of people going about their business and feels compassion for them. And from that place of compassion, he sends out his 12 disciples to reach out to them. So where do you see yourself in this story? Do you identify as being one of the crowd? So many struggles and challenges. Jesus looked on them with love in his heart because they looked so lost, like sheep without a shepherd, helpless and harassed, with no one to guide them and keep them safe. Or do you identify as one of the disciples that Jesus sent out to them? Sent by Jesus, with a fire in your heart and words to proclaim, and healing to offer to the people who are struggling, whether that's spiritually or emotionally or physically. Where do you put yourself in today's story? Frequently, the church has focused on itself as the disciples, the ones sent by Jesus out into the world full of lost sheep, sent to bring them back to the fold. The church has seen itself as the ones who have it all sussed. We have all the answers. We have Jesus. And all you need is to become like us. We are the doctors and you are the sick patients. You are the lost sheep. We need to bring you back home. We are the church. We're sorted. And you need a little bit of what we've got. And we're going to give it to you. I wonder, does that sound familiar to you? I wonder also whether it feels like the reality. Is it quite as simple as that? Do you think you've got it all sussed in life? You're there. You've got this following Jesus all figured out. I'm not so sure that I always do. No matter how long we've been a Christian, I am certain that there are times when we all feel lost, harassed and helpless, feeling like we don't quite know which way to go. And I think the last few years have shown that especially. Covid destroyed so many lives, many died, 
Many are still suffering with long COVID and jobs are still being lost because of this. Many were and are worried to leave their homes and meet with others. Loneliness increased, completed suicides increased. The world changed forever. The wars which rage across our world, Ukraine, Russia, Syria, Afghanistan, Ethiopia, Iraq, Yemen, to name but a few places. Images on our TV screens and in our media of intense suffering of young and old alike. People displaced, homes and lives destroyed. And then there's the trauma that we've witnessed so close to home. Increasing prices, meaning that people we know had to choose between eating and heating this last winter. Families losing their homes because of mortgage and rent increases. Children being shot and stabbed in our streets and in their homes. People suffering abuse at the hands of people in power. The world frequently feels like a bewildering place, but just recently it seemed more so than before. As Christians, we have a faith in God, but things which happen in the world around us, things which happen to people we love, things which happen to us, can shake this faith, test it, get us to think things differently. And it's not necessarily about losing faith in God, but about us needing to work out where God is in it all. Because no matter how lost, harassed and helpless we feel, God is in it with us. He doesn't bail when the going gets rocky and tough. I would also suggest about us thinking, who does God want me to be as a Christian in the middle of this storm? And it might be that we feel ourselves challenged and nudged by God to look at ourselves, to rethink our ideas and assumptions in order for us to look on the situation as he does, with compassion and love. In other words, he may be calling us and our attitudes to change. He may be calling us to stand up for those who have no voice and seek justice, mercy and grace. Or he may be asking us to let others in, to walk alongside us and be advocates for us in our times of struggle. It's okay to feel like one of the helpless crowd in the world in which we live. In fact, it's pretty normal. But what we have to do is try to make sure that we stay focused on God and keep listening out for Jesus' voice above the din and noise of the world and be open to changing for God. So what about the disciples in today's Gospel? Jesus called them to go to these helpless and harassed people proclaiming the good news healing them of their struggles, spiritually, emotionally and physically. That's what he called them to do. And that's what he calls us to do. Even when we don't feel that we've got it all sorted ourselves. And if you ever feel that you're not good enough to share the gospel, to be one of Jesus' followers, just look at the list of names that we hear today. Thomas. A doubter, Simon Peter, a denier, Judas, a betrayer, Simon, a zealot, Matthew, a tax collector, James and John, ordinary, uneducated fishermen. This was a mixed bunch, and so are we. And if we ever think we don't have it exactly sorted, if we ever think we've not quite mastered this Christianity business, just remember them, because they didn't either. They questioned, they denied, they doubted, 
They fled Jesus in his darkest hour. Repeatedly through the Gospels, they showed that they didn't quite get it yet. Those disciples were constantly working it all out, trying to figure out who this Jesus was and what he means, just like we do. And despite all of this, despite their questions and their failures, God used them. In fact, without them and all of the first followers of Jesus, we wouldn't be here today. We wouldn't have heard the good news of Jesus and discovered God's love for ourselves. Today, we are reminded that even though we sometimes don't feel like the finished article, even though there are things we're still trying to figure out about being one of Jesus's followers. That's okay. In fact, it's more than okay. God can and will still use us to do amazing things. Those early disciples figured it out as they went along. And that's what we need to do. Walk alongside each other. Try to work it out together. And when one of us feels harassed and helpless, help them to see and hear Jesus above the din and noise of this world. And allow them to do the same for us when we feel like that. So, back to the question I began with. Where do you see yourself in today's Gospel? Do you identify as one of the helpless and harassed crowd? Or do you identify as one of the disciples, sharing the good news with others? Or perhaps you feel a little bit of both and it changes all the time. All of those options are completely okay because Jesus is faithful and patient and Jesus can and will use us, even when we feel like we're still figuring it all out. Amen. And so now we declare our faith in God with the words of the Creed. We believe in God the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named. We believe in God the Son, who lives in our hearts through faith and fills us with his love. We believe in God, the Holy Spirit, who strengthens us with power from on high. We believe in one God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. Now I hand over to Fiona for our intercessory prayers. Lord, when we feel daunted at the sheer number and weight of the tasks which face our church, mindful that we are fewer and fewer in number, remind us once more of the mustard seed, the tiniest seed. Yet when it is planted and nurtured, it grows into a strong tree and provides food and shelter for others. If we only look at the external, we see only how small and weak it is. But though small and insignificant, if we allow God to work through us, then things can grow and strong and good beyond all our imaginings. We ask for your help in all our efforts at building communities within our community. You have promised us that no matter how small the initiative, if we plant it and tend it, you will send the sun and the rain to help it flourish. Though we may not succeed at first attempt, give us the courage to try again and the readiness continue to persevere should that be needed. And may all that be done to your greater glory. We ask that through you we will have the strength to build your church, O oh Lord, into the community of loving, peacemaking, justice-seeking people that you intended when you sent your own beloved Son here to suffer with us and experience our joys and sorrows, our fears and griefs, our pains and tears. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we pray for those who govern the nations of our world on behalf of the people. Give them strength in time of trouble. Grant them your light and your wisdom and support them through, our prayer, through the prayers of our hearts. 
Lord of compassion, guide all those who bear public office, that they may use their power for the common good. We pray that they will always remember to <clears throat> we will pray that they will always remember their promise to serve all the people and that they will resist the temptation to self serve and thirst for power and wealth. And we pray for specific places in the world where leaders do not have the best interests of all their people at heart and seek to pursue wealth and power for themselves. We pray for Russia, China, North Korea, Afghanistan, Somalia and Yemen in particular. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we bring before you all those who pray for shelter from the storm and protection from the thunder, the lightning and the rain. Teach us how to survive the tempests of this life which come to all. Instead of craving security, show us the comfort of sheltering with friends and sharing the bare necessities. Help us to comfort each other in moments of shared danger or distress. Bring us hope out of our emptiness, energy out of fear and new life out of grief and loss. We share this world with those who are embattled by war and injustice, those fighting loneliness, fear, disease, hunger and grief. Hear us as we pray for them and embolden us to strive with them for justice, health, wholeness and peace. We pray for the healing of nations, for the forgiveness of, forgiveness of past sins and the opportunities of new beginnings. We bring before you the countries broken by war, hatred and suspicion, for those driven out of their homes and lands by violence. And we pray that animosity may be exchanged for trust and love. Strengthen those who you have called to speak out, who challenge injustice, apathy and untruth for those who campaign for the well-being of your people and your world. As we remember that Christ suffers with all humanity, may we all continually be filled with your vision for peace. Keep us from the sin of thinking that the problems of the world are nothing to do with us and that we can't do anything to change world events. For we are all children of one Heavenly Father and we must work together to do his bidding no matter how small we fear our voices. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we pray for the leaders of our church, both nationally and locally. We pray in particular for Bishop Sarah, Reverend Debbie and Reverend Lisa. We pray for all our readers and our PCCs who all work so hard together to provide spiritual guidance and support to us and the wider community. Please work with them as they reach out to the hard to reach, the unloved, the misunderstood, the vulnerable, the scared, the angry and the lonely, that they might come to know your love and to experience the good that is on offer. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O oh Lord, we pray for all who are suffering and sick in body, mind and soul, who are experiencing all forms of chronic and terminal illnesses. We pray for them and their families. We pray for the medical staff who are treating them, that they may have the knowledge to treat them and the compassion to care for them. We pray for all those who are going through the difficult and tragic moments of feeling helpless and hopeless with coping and dealing with the effects of all these illnesses. We take a moment now to pray for those we know personally who are vulnerable and scared, who need your loving kindness and tender mercies. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O oh Lord, we humbly entrust our brothers and sisters who have recently died to your loving care. In this life, you embrace them with your tender love. We know that you welcome them into paradise, where there'll be no sorrow, no weeping or pain, but fullness of peace and joy with your Son and the Holy Spirit. We ask that you comfort the family and friends that they have left behind and grant them the courage and strength they will need in the weeks and months to come. Accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Lord, Jesus Christ. Amen. And so we come to a time where we share spiritual communion with God. At the Last Supper, Jesus, sharing bread and wine, 
invited the disciples to share his journey. Like many grains of wheat becoming one loaf of bread, the disciples were invited to become one body with him. Here today, though scattered, we renew our journey with Jesus and his disciples. Here today, we renew our unity with one another and with all those who have gone before us. Here we renew our communion with the earth and our interwovenness with the broken ones of the world. Where can I go from your spirit? Or where can I flee from your presence? If I ascend to heaven, you are there. If I make my bed in the grave, you are there also. If I take the wings of the morning and settle at the farthest limits of the sea, even there your hand shall lead me and your right hand shall hold me fast. Jesus says, listen, I'm standing at the door knocking. If you hear my voice and open the door, I will come into you and eat with you and you with me. Lord our God, you prepare a table before us, and although we cannot be present at your holy Eucharist, by your grace, open our hearts to receive the gift of your Son, the Word made flesh, who, on the night that he was betrayed, took bread, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shared for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. Send your Holy Spirit upon us, that, though separated by distance, we may still, through faith, be partakers in the benefits of Christ's offering of his body and his blood. And this we ask through the same Jesus Christ, our Saviour. Amen. We say together, Most merciful Lord, your love compels us to come in. Our hands were unclean, our hearts were unprepared. We were not fit even to eat the crumbs from under your table. But you, Lord, are the God of our salvation and share your bread with sinners. So cleanse and feed us with the precious body and blood of your Son, that he may live in us and we in him, and that we, with the whole company of Christ, may sit and eat in your kingdom. Amen. A time of reflection now follows, as each person present makes their own spiritual communion with God, and we listen to All My Hope on God is Founded.
our Saviour has taught us, let us pray with confidence. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Remember, I am with you to the end of the age, says the Lord. And so as we come towards the end of our service, we have our hymn, Forth in the Peace of Christ I Go. behind me is I believe a pyramidal orchid. Isn't it beautiful? And it can be found in St Peter's Churchyard. St Peter's Churchyard has um, a new ecology and diversity officer looking after it and we've got areas that will remain unmowed um, um, for the growing period and up to now we have found over 80 different species of um, flora and fauna in the churchyard. Isn't that amazing? So why not wander down to St Peter's Churchyard and have a look around, just um, gaze down as you walk through and experience the beauty and miracle of God's creation. What a special place it is. Lots of the um, flora down there are from the original meadows of this area. Um, and they, they just pop up every year and normally we're so intent on mowing and keeping it looking neat and tidy that we miss the beauty of what gives us what God gives us quite naturally so do go down and take a look before their natural flowering flowering period is over um, experience after Easter is happening in um, Holy Trinity Rockwood Ironwood this coming week Monday, Tuesday and Thursday we've got year groups from Prisley Primary, Red Hill and Rock Downwood Juniors coming in to learn a little bit more about those events that happened after Easter. So looking about at Pentecost, at Trinity, at the Ascension. Um, so please do pray for that event. Please pray that the children have a good experience of God. And if you would like to offer to come along and help with that, we would be most grateful. So please do get in touch with myself or Lisa if you have some time available, particularly on the Tuesday. We're quite short of volunteers for the Tuesday at this moment. We've got a couple of PCCs this week. So if you are on the PCC for St. Peter's, um, you're meeting us at seven o'clock on Monday. And if you're on the PCC for Holy Trinity Oak and Gates, then your PCC meeting is seven o'clock on Wednesday. There is a mass preceding that one at 6.30, to which everybody is invited to come along and attend. Um, 
that's pretty much it for this week really lots happening do take a look at the notices um, lots going on in there lots of information from um, further afield as well deanery and diocese so do take a look at that uh, please do pray for um, the three people being baptised on Sunday, for Samuel, Jacob and Luke, as we give thanks for the beginning of their journey walking with God. And then please do pray for those whose journeys through this world have come to an end, although their journey too continues with God. Please do pray for their families as they grieve. And they will be the families of John Jones, Betty Bolan, Evelyn Noakes and Sylvia Lloyd. Stay safe, have a good week, enjoy the beauty around you and we look forward to seeing you soon. God bless. And so we come to our final blessing. Go forth into the world in peace. Be of good courage, hold fast to that which is good. Render to no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted and support the weak. Help the afflicted. Honour everyone, love and serve the Lord, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be upon you and those whom you love, today and always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. And so I send you out with the hymn Jubilate everybody. Do stay safe in this heat and God bless. Jubilate everybody, serve the Lord in all your ways and come before his presence daily. Enter now his courts with praise. For the Lord our God is great.